Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make these. So I'm gonna show you how to make, we're gonna make, oh, wait a minute, these 3D hanging pouches. They're absolutely massive. That's because this one is for a kangaroo and there's also a slightly smaller wallaby size. These end up hanging from the holes in the side like this and then the kangaroo or wallaby can jump in and out of this pouch and it's nice and cozy for them. As you can see, I accidentally put the lovely polar bears upside down in this one, but it still works. The instructions are the same for both and they are in desperate need of both of them. Just cut out the size that you wanna make. I'll leave all the measurements below and let's get sewing. If you have some old sheets that are lying around, they're great to use for this project because it takes so much fabric. So for the outer fabric, you're gonna want a piece of 100% cotton that's nice and sturdy. What I used for the liner is flannel. This was donated by Laura and Bethany. Thank you very much for donating some old sheets that I could cut up. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is if you're using inches like me, you have to convert the measurements. So, good thing Google does it for you. Like I said, I'll put all the measurements below in the description field so you can follow along. And make whatever size you want. Keep all this extra fabric that you're cutting off because we can make something else with it later. Okay, so now you'll have two pieces of fabric that are the exact same size. And what we're gonna do now, take the fabric lengthwise and fold it right sides together. Do that for both pieces. So now what you have is your two pieces of fabric, your inner and your outer, both are folded lengthwise and have the fold down at the bottom. What you're gonna do is take a plate and you're gonna curve this bottom corner here. So when we sew this together, we're gonna be using a half inch seam allowance and put the plate so that it touches this half inch mark and just touches this bottom fold. And I'm just gonna mark along that curve so that way when I sew down, when I get to this point, I'll just follow right along this curve here. We're gonna do that for both pieces. Okay, again, the fold is down here and it's open on all three other sides. Okay, once you're done marking your curve, you're gonna take your plate and flip it over and make yourself the most Australian snack you know of. Okay, I have never had this before. Um, I just thought it would be funny to try it since I'm making all the stuff and sending it to Australia. After a quick Google search, it just said, put it on some toast with uh, a little bit of butter. So I have done that. What, should we try this Vegemite? Joey says no. It doesn't smell horrible. Here goes nothing. Oh my, Australia. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but this is not for me. Let's just send this right back where it came from. Let's just stick with sewing on this channel, okay? Now that we have our curve marked out, we are gonna sew all along this edge and right around the curve using a half inch seam allowance. You can see the line is coming up, so when we hit that, we're just gonna sew right along that curve. When you get to the edge, backstitch a little bit and then just sew right off the fabric.
And now we're going to do this for the other piece as well. What you're going to do now is you are just going to clip the curve just a little bit. That'll just help it lay flatter. And you're going to do that with both pieces. Okay, so now you have both pieces, the inner and the outer. They're both inside out. We've sewn down one end and around the curve, clipped our curve. These patterns are pretty specific as to how they want you to sew them together because they know how it works best for the animals. You always want to follow the pattern as precisely as possible. Don't go rogue or anything. That being said, I'm going to go rogue. I believe that this part of the pattern, changing it up a little bit is going to make it slightly easier to put it all together. So for this next step, instead of doing what they say, we're going to assemble this like a bag. I'm going to take the outer piece and flip it right side out. Once the outer part of the pouch is right sides out, you are going to open up the lining, put the outer part of the bag inside of the lining. We're going to match up the seams and then we're going to use some clips to clip all along this edge of the fabric. You can see we have clipped around the entire pouch. Make sure all your corners are lined up and that your seam is lined up. And now we're going to go back over to the sewing machine and sew all around. We're going to leave a big gap right here so we can flip it right side out, just like how you would if you're making a handbag. It's going to be a lot easier than turning in all the edges. My only experience with kangaroos is going to a zoo here in the US one time and they had a kangaroo walkabout and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be so awesome. I'm going to go in there and hang out with the kangaroos. And we got there and as we were going in, the zookeeper was telling us that the one kangaroo was pretty aggressive. Then we had to watch out because it could potentially start coming after us. And if it did, we had to like run as fast as we could out of the enclosure. And the whole time I was expecting Roger to come around the corner. You guys know the one I'm talking about. The one that looks like he's been given steroids. His muscles are totally ripped. That picture of that kangaroo honestly gave me nightmares for a while. So then I just kept thinking, how safe is this really? I mean, it was really cool to be in there with the kangaroos, but on the other hand, I was just worried they were going to attack me at any minute. Okay, here is where I started. So remember, we're going to leave a pretty big gap so we can flip this right side out. forget to poke your corners out. Push the lining into the rest of the pouch. This is what we have so far. Next, go ahead and fold the edges in where you have that opening where we just flipped it right side out. And then we're gonna stitch really close to the edge to close that up. Clip any loose threads. Just double check to make sure you caught all the fabric on the front and the back, and that edge is totally sealed up. Fold the bag together. Here's the opening at the top. Here's the curved edge down here. So this is all open. Now we're gonna make a couple marks. I'm gonna use Sharpie so that you can see this, but um, you can just use a regular pen or chalk pencil if you have one. 
So this next part, we're gonna make a dot about an inch and a half in or four centimeters. And then we are gonna sew from there down eight centimeters or three inches. So we're just gonna stitch straight down between these two dots. Okay, now that is stitched together at the top. Now what we're gonna do is fold back just like this. So put a couple pins or clips all around both edges of the opening. So you can see it's starting to take shape. This is gonna be the opening where the kangaroo or wallaby jumps in and out. The next thing we're gonna do is sew all around the edge of this flap. This part's a little tricky because you don't wanna sew the edge to the inside. So you really have to watch and just keep moving your fabric around as you're sewing along. If your sewing machine has a removable accessory tray, I would recommend taking that off right now. You don't have to, but I felt like it helped me make sure that this doesn't get in the way. I sort of tucked this fabric under here as I started sewing. And we're just gonna sew right along this edge, as close to the edge as possible. Just keep checking that the inside of the pouch is out of the way. At some point you're gonna have to take this big wad of fabric and just shove it through to the other side just to get it out of the way. Don't forget to clip any loose threads that you see. We're almost done. An easy way to find the center is it's already folded, so this is your center. Where we just found our center, I'm gonna keep my finger there and match it up with the front seam. You push out your edges. Now we're getting somewhere. Just a few more steps and we'll be done. What we wanna do now is sew a couple lines across the top. That'll be where they put the rod through so this will be able to hang for all the little joeys. You can always check to make sure that it's even by just doing a quick measurement, and that's pretty close, so we'll go with that. So we're gonna go in from the edge, nine centimeters, or about three and a half inches. I'll use pen for this because it's on the outside. So I'm gonna put a little dot here. So do that from each edge. We're gonna sew across close to the edge between those two dots, right here where the opening starts. I'm gonna put my ruler, and this is gonna be about 10 centimeters or approximately four inches. It's just gonna be slightly in from these markings. So we're gonna sew along the top and straight along this line here. 
I'm gonna mark mine with a chalk pencil just to make sure that that line is nice and straight. Find your dot and put it right under your needle. Make sure your edges are lined up. Make sure you forward and back stitch a couple times. And I'm using a really small stitch length because this is gonna take all the way to the kangaroo or the wallaby when it's hanging. We're gonna find our next marking and sew between those two dots. We are done! Some kangaroo is gonna love this. I hope they match the animals to the pouches based on their personalities. Can't you imagine a total wild woman hanging out in this one? I love it. That's how you make these, get sewing. Okay, Joey, help cover me up. I'm gonna mail myself to Australia, bye. <laughs> She's not gonna help me.